I cannot stand behind the podium. Wow, how can I follow that? That was phenomenal. Thank you so much. Uh, and thank you, Dr. Cannon. Uh, Melvin, thank you for that, for this opportunity and this honor. I am so grateful uh, for this opportunity today. It is, it is amazing. I, uh, um, give you a little bit of background. <clears throat> So, so we're talking about the veterans community and, and, and the great things that, that uh, Gwinnett Tech does for, for veterans. I'm a veteran myself. Uh, I was in the Air Force from uh, 89. Thank you. Um, I was in the Air Force from 1989 to 1993. I loaded bombs on F-16s. Now, that was really cool, but the reality was you try to put that on a resume as a former bomb loader, just saying, man, it's, it's just a little tough. But um, uh, I was fortunate. I had a, I had a really great um, support community. I had good family. I had great opportunities and, 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 and didn't have nearly the struggles that we just, just heard of. But, uh, but I wanted something a little different for my life. Um, I, I went to work for a company that uh, had a commercial cabinet company. And they said, hey, we, we're about to buy this new machine. It's a CNC machine. Now, I was a foreman out on the shop floor manufacturing commercial cabinets. And they said, we're gonna get this CNC machine and we need somebody to learn CAD. Honestly, I didn't even know what CAD was, but they said it would be in the air condition in the office and I would have to pay for my own school if I wanted to do that. And they said, they, they think that this Gwinnett Tech has some, some classes on it. So I sat down, I talked to my wife and I was like, look, I don't know, I don't know what this is all about, but I'm gonna go check it out. Signed up for AutoCAD Release 11 Level 1 class back in 1995, and it changed my life. Because what I saw there, I was like, man, you get, they turned the lights on. I'd never even taken a drafting class, right? But they turned the lights on, turned the computers on. They said, this is what you're going to learn. And I was like, man, if you get paid to do this, I am in, right? And, and so I took every class that Gwinnett Tech offered. I took Level 1, Level 2, all the advanced. I took... Lisp, believe I mean, that's not the way I talk. It's it's a, it's a programming language for for AutoCAD um, and and 3D Studio Max. I took everything that that Gwinnett Tech offered, and it gave. This was the launching pad for me to be able to to do some really cool stuff. And ended up uh, teaching here at Gwinnett Tech. And I taught Level One and Level Two AutoCAD, and and just loved it. And was able to see, you know, when a student sees it. And the lights come on, and they're like, ah, aha. Man, it was very rewarding. But I found out that, that my, um, my natural tendencies are, 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 are to get in the sales arena. I, I took a, a, CAD, a couple of CAD jobs over the years and was, was pretty successful in those places. Because of the skills that I learned here, I was out-earning engineers that had way bigger debt and way much more experience, uh, educational experience than I had because of the skills, the applicable skills that I learned here in these CAD programs. So I was, the, I was, I was kind of the hot shot. I was able to come in and, and help people be really successful using CAD. that They didn't teach in college, but they taught right here at Gwinnett Tech. Really cool stuff. I mean, it's stuff that you can put to work. And, and so I was, again, really, really blessed to be that. And, and I, I spent quite a bit of time behind the desk running a mouse you know, in drafting and design. But I found that I had a little bit too much gypsy in my blood and I needed to be out on the road, so I got into sales. I actually got a, uh, got a job selling AutoCAD and loved it, man. I found out that was my love and, and, and got into the sales arena and really enjoyed that piece. Fast forward to today, I found that there was, there was really not a place for manufacturers to get together and connect. So I founded the Georgia Manufacturing Alliance back in 2008 with a sole purpose to help support and grow manufacturing in Georgia. Which is cool. Now, now what we do is we, do, we take plant tours, we go to factories, we do plant tours and networking events and educational sessions. And over the past 12 months, we've had about 35 industry leaders, 3,500 industry leaders attend events that we hosted all around the state. We tour places like Caterpillar and Coca-Cola and Bluebird Bus and Gulfstream and Daniel Defense and at King's Hawaiian right here around the corner. You know, and you might think, well, what does a, a King's Hawaiian roll have to do with a $65 million airplane? A lot. It's manufacturing. And we give industry 
professionals the opportunity to see world-class manufacturing in action so that they can learn those best practices and learn from each other so that they can be more successful. And, and, and again, that's a really cool opportunity to be able to do that. And we just finished, we, we just finished our big event for the year. We had, a, had almost 800 people come to the Cobb Galleria on Wednesday of this week for the Georgia Manufacturing Summit. And we had keynote speakers from, well, the, the, the Chief Administrative Officer from um, uh, Kia, Stuart Countess was one of our keynote speakers, and Warner Washington, man, that guy killed it. 35-year veteran from Procter & Gamble was on stage sharing 35 years of experience of what works and what's successful in manufacturing. And let me, let me bring this all back to where we're at today. The reason we're here today is to celebrate 35 years. It's really cool how that kind of connects. 35 years of success right here in our community with Gwinnett Tech. And... Man, the lives that have been touched by this. I know ours will forever be changed from the opportunities that, that I got as a student here at Gwinnett Tech. And, and, it, and it's really cool to see where we're going forward. And, and I love Melvin. Melvin, I go way back. He's great. If you don't know Melvin Everson, make sure you get to know him before the day is over. He is, he is a rock star. And, and Melvin and Dr. Cannon, uh, we sat down and we were talking a little bit about what's going on in the business community. And, and, and I love hanging around people with passion. I believe we need more of that in, in our country as people that are excited about what they do. And I don't know that I've ever met anybody more passionate about students and manufacturing and helping people be more successful than Dr. Cannon. And that is so cool to be around people like that. And, and when he told me what was going on with this advanced manufacturing, mechatronics degrees, and, and, and what we're doing right here in our community, man, I am, I am so excited. Now, now is the time. We all, I mean, we know in technical colleges, we, we kind of stepped away from a lot of the things that made America great. You know, the, the manufacturing and the machining. And, and I understand, you know, you have to look at it like a business. If you don't have students enough to make a class, you can't continue a class if people don't show up for it. I get that. But where we're headed now, where people can be proud of being able to work with their hands, work with their mind, to be able to build things again and make stuff right here in America, especially right here in Georgia, man, we got it. We are at the right place at the right time with this leadership and this commitment to the community. It can't get any better. So, so thank you for the opportunity to be here. And thank you, Gwinnett Tech, for the past 35 years, for all that you've done in the community. And I'm excited about seeing what I can do to help support this and continue to grow this in our community for generations to come. Thanks.